Make you glad. Got to plead for the Lord's forgiveness. Touch somebody and say, these are my confessions. Uh, I, I've, I've done some things I wasn't supposed to do. Uh, I've done some hindrance. And I, and, and I ain't got to tell you anything. Because if I, tell, if I tell you, you may look at me a different way. But if I tell the Lord, he knows how he won't look at me and judge me for who I really am. He won't look at me as some type of crook. He won't look at me as some type of sinner. But he will look at me and say, you know what? You have messed up. And, but I can change your mess and give you a message. Am I in the right church of the day? But you know you were deep down in the deepest extremity. You were so down that down began to look down on you. And that you began to, you did not know what to do. But somehow the Lord picked you up out of the muck and miry clay. And it placed your feet on a rock to stay. The text says. Said, he said, have mercy upon me first of all let me give you my first point uh you got to acknowledge the god who can forgive and who is merciful look at this text he says verse number one have mercy upon me according to your loving kindness according to the multitude of thy tender mercies now in hebrew poetry this is called an antithetical statement verse in other words, the verses, each stanza may be worded differently, but the concept remains the same. David, all he is saying is, Lord, I acknowledge that you are a merciful God, and I need you to have mercy upon me. And every now and then, we need to come to God and say, Lord, I need you to just to have mercy upon me. Mercy is God not giving you what you do deserve. Some of us know what we deserve. Some of us know that we deserve to be left out for dead. But somehow the grace of grandmama said it was amazing grace. Anybody know about amazing grace? How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Thank God for his mercy. Thank God he looks beyond me and sees the, what the potential that's in me. And young people, you need to understand that in order for you to walk in the potential that God has for you, you got to get real. You got to face the moment of truth. You got to wake up and smell the coffee. And you got to say, Lord, I messed up. I've done my own thing. But Lord, make me over again. And is there anybody here that know that the Lord knows how to make you over again now 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 don't shout yet don't shout yet because i read this verse and as i read it i had to shout i i was in the house last night and as i was reading the verse i i, I almost wanted to make some noise i had to go outside and kind of clear my head because every time i read it i just wanted to preach because the text says, according to the multitude of thy mercies. Now the question is, why does God have multitude of mercies? Because he knows that every day that I wake up, I'm bound to make some mistakes. And so that's why the hymnologist said, oh, great is thy faithfulness. Lord, unto me, morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hands provided yeah. hallelujah yeah. hallelujah yeah. hallelujah thank god for his mercy and you got to acknowledge the fact that he has mercies available for you not only does he have mercies available for you but he has grace available for you you have access into the grace of God so that when you feel weak when you feel like you can't make it when you call on the mercy of God that mercy of God will give you what you won't give you what you deserve and the grace of God will keep you even when you don't deserve to be kept secondly you got to appeal to God's cleansing power 
while understanding your human frailty. David in the second through the seventh verses. He says, Lord, clean me. Create in me. Wash me. And, 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 and what he's basically saying, Lord, I'm, I'm weak, but thou art mighty. I need to be cleansed by you. And every now and then, my brothers and my sisters, when we come to God, it's a good thing to know that we have a God that is able to cleanse us from all of our mess. Now, watch this. You can't get it until you admit you've got a problem. You know, there are so many po- folk around that walk around here like they, 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 that, like they are the epitome of a Christian. Like they are, that, like they are the in all and be all. Like they were born with a silver tongue or spoon in their mouth. But I come to tell you, all of us was born in sin. All of us have some mess. We all have some issues and some tissues. We've all been broke, busted, disgusted, and could not be trusted. But somehow the grace of God picked us up out of the muck and the miry clay and placed our feet on the rock to stay. Create in me a clean heart. Lord, I, 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 I admit I'm not going to come to you with a haughty spirit. I'm not going to come to you with a spirit of bigotry, but I'm going to come to you as an empty picture before a full fountain. And I need you to feel my cup. And I, I don't think there's anybody in here that needs God to feel their cup. But I come to the, but every now and then, I need God to just step right in on in me because I recognize I, I'm not what I am, what I need to be. I still have a habit of letting the ghetto come out in me. Come on, somebody. I still have the I still have a habit of letting the bottom come out in me. But when that bottom comes out in me, when the 46th Street side of me comes out, then I've got to appeal to God for his mercy and recognize that he will. And the Bible says that when I come to him, he is faithful. And that's one thing I love about God. That even in the midst of my unfaithfulness, God is faithful. In other words, he's consistent with me when I'm not consistent with him. Even when I mess up, God said, you know what? I still.